Hi, my name is Norm. Welcome to another Quick Flicks brought to you by Summit Racing Equipment. Today we're going to talk about rocker arm and rocker arm ratio particularly and how to figure all of that stuff out, okay? <music> Okay, hey, welcome back. So let's talk about a little bit of history here with rocker arm ratio and, and how the, the changing of ratios came about. If you think back to the early and middle 60s, this is probably where uh, engineers and racers started experimenting uh, with the change of rocker ratios. During the early years here, or the 60s, like this, there were no aftermarket heads being produced. Uh, there was uh, a very limited cam selection. All the cam profiles were, were really grinding. I mean, a cam grinder was a cam grinder. There was no computer-aided technology to say, hey, let's build a cam profile like this because of uh, this event in the combustion process. So everything was, was very much hit and miss. A lot of this was trial and, trial and error uh, machining for cam profiles. And as I said, we're on stock cylinder heads, no aftermarket heads. The stock heads during this time frame were very limited on, limited on the exhaust side of things. And primarily here, I'm gonna focus on small block Chevrolet. Uh, this is where a lot of the engineers came on board and said, hey, let's see if we can enhance this uh, exhaust side by moving from our stock 1.5 ratio to a 1.6. So, that really changed the, the, the power side of the small Chevy head. And lo and behold, what worked on the exhaust side was eventually tried on the intake side. Now we have 1.6 rockers replacing the factory 1.5 in all 16 locations instead of just the exhaust side. Uh, as, that, as that happened, uh, time is passing and we move into a little more current times, you know, into the 70s, into the later 70s and earlier 80s. Cylinder heads are starting to come out now from the aftermarket industry. Computer-aided design is starting to come on board with cam profiles, but we're still seeing the rocker ratio change uh, still happen in a lot of motor families. And all right, so let's look at some math. Uh, first of all, let's look at how to determine a rocker ratio uh, and then we'll look at why it's really important, the, the, big, the big deal, okay? So rocker arm ratio is basically a formula of Y divided by X. Uh, y being the distance from my uh, fulcrum or my trunnion in this case. I'm using a, a roller rocker because they're well machined, they're very defined on their center lines. So my center line from my trunnion or, or my fulcrum out to the center line of my roller tip we're going to call that Y. And in this case, I'm just going to give it a number of 1.5, that distance, uh, divided by X. Now, in the X in this case would be, again, from my center line of my trunnion or my fulcrum back to the pushrod pocket center line on this particular rocker. Okay, and we're going to call that X distance 1.0. So using easy numbers to work with, because I need easy numbers, all right? So Y divided by X. My 1.5 divided by 1 equals 1.5. Any number divided by 1 is that number. Okay, so real easy. So here's my 1.5 ratio rocker arm. Hey, all right. Now, why am I saying all that? To get to the good stuff, okay? So let's talk about the power side of this while we're all watching this video. All right, so think it with me, if you will, about a cam profile. Let's say that this is a moderate performance cam, uh, and we'll just say 1.5 ratio would be a, a stock small Chevy application. So maybe we're on a small block Chevy. I know, I know, I know. It's all right, though. Stay with me. So let's say lobe lift, all right? Off of my base circle, I have a lobe lift of 0 0.300 inches. All right, so I'm going to write that in up here. Lobe lift 0 0.300. Now, with a 1.5 ratio rocker arm, because my rocker arm does the multiplication thing between my lobe lift and camshaft over to the other side of my valve train at the valve. So 1.5 times 300, again, easy numbers, I can almost do it up here. 450 for valve lift, okay, 0 
if I change that to a 1.6, I can pick up 30 thousandths of additional lift real easy just by changing the ratio on my rockers. So 0.300 times 1.6, for that one I might need a calculator, but I know it turns out to be 0.480. Again, you see the 30 thousandths difference. Why is this so important? I'll tell you, it's the lift thing, okay? Lift is almost always equated to the power side when you're looking at a cam profile or when you're thinking about power with lift and duration, okay? Duration tends to be more what you focus on when you're looking at where you want that peak power to occur, okay? So like peak torque, what RPM? So here, we know we've picked up 30 thousandths worth of additional lift. I picked up probably a considerable amount of power just by doing a rocker arm ratio change. Now I do want to mention the fact that there is a change to the duration side of things also, okay? So if you will imagine with me, as my lifter starts to leave the base circle of my cam and move up the ramp of my lobe, my valve on the other side of the, of the rocker arm assembly and of my valve train is starting to lift off of its seat. From that point, all the way around to where the valve is almost closed again and my lifter is almost back to the base circle, that window is going to have, that, in that window of, or that range of movement, there is going to be an effect on my duration number. Now my cam, my 220 at 50 cam is still going to be a 220 at 50 cam. Um, what's going to happen though is my duration number in that window or under that window of operation is going to change. It's going to change a little bit when you have a smaller lobe lift and you have a small change in the ratio. It's going to change more dramatically as my lobe lift increases and my ratio changes uh, increase my ratio change increases. Let's say I went from a 1.5 to a 1.7 or a 1.5 to a 1.75. Or even if I were a forward going from a 1.6 to a 1.8, okay? So there my numbers are going to change more dramatically in that under the window or in the window uh, for my duration at 50, my duration number. All right, so I hope you enjoyed some rocker ratio uh, theory and math and a little history there. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, please leave your comments down below. Uh, you can subscribe, and if you want to look at some more videos, they're over here. So just uh, please post your comments, and thanks for watching Summit Racing Equipment's Quick Flicks. Bye.